Um, but then he, he he then leans down, picks up the the, the remnants of what they were, and he goes, "Can I use this as basing material?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, rub that in. Why don't you?" Yes, Class cat litter sometimes for rocks. Which is Excuse cheap. me. Yeah, <laughs> cat litter. Break, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. right. Yeah. The cheap stuff, not the um, not the super absorbent stuff, because that just absorbs all, just sinks, just, oh, just right, sucks okay. all the paint up. Right. You like you paint it, and then you go back to it. And it's like, it's like, I, yeah, I just gone gone. Look yeah. at me. Yeah. <laughs> Look what you made. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the Warm Up Podcast. We're your hosts, Jack and Dan. Today we're going to be talking about the joy of painting. And oh yes. Honestly, there's so much to talk about. We're actually going to split this into two parts. Um, but before we get actually into the episode, Dan, we've got a little giveaway going on, don't we? Yes, yes. To celebrate us hitting 500 subs on YouTube, we are giving away a £100 Woo! Games Workshop voucher. 100! Uh, or if you don't live in the UK, we'll give you £100 in your equivalent currency. So no. don't feel that you can't enter. Yep. And it's dead easy to enter. All you need to do is go to our Instagram account, there's a pinned post there about it. Just just like uh, like and share that post. And obviously make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yep. And uh, we're drawing it at the end of April. So get your entries in quick and best of luck. Yes, super easy to do. And it'll help us out as well. So we do appreciate yeah. it. Really do appreciate it. So the episode itself, The Joy of Painting. Dan. Or the stress of painting. Or the stress of painting, yes. <laughs> uh, the title might change depending on how this, uh, this, this goes. Well, but, yeah. You know, are you a good, or are we good painters, Dan? I think you are a good painter. Yeah? Um, I, I'm, I'm blushing now. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> You're not. No, no don't I'm a terrible bad. painter. Uh, I'm getting better, but yeah. I've had a lot of painting fails. <laughs> Um, I've, mm. I've given up on the airbrush at the moment because I had so many It's hard, with it. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the airbrush is a hard one. But no, I mean, you say that. I mean, like, you, your Necrons are looking pretty nice and your Drakari's looking a lot better as well. Thank you. Necrons. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. I think um, it's just, uh, you've got to put the reps in. We'll talk about that in a bit. But, yeah. I mean, things like uh, the very first uh, models I painted I didn't thin my paints, so those Scorpex are really thick. Like, <laughs> too, too thick coats. Yeah, too thick coats, exactly, yeah. So, like, I think there's some detail under there somewhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, That's how you could describe our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too thick blokes. <laughs> yeah. But yes, but yes. No, to be fair though, I mean, our painting styles, I think the, the, the way here you can tell that we are getting better is that we know what we need to do next. Yes. Like yes. you mentioned before that you're doing like, you know, you had like really thick coats on your first paints. Well, yeah. I never used to thin my coat my paint down either uh, but now i'm like oh i've got like a little my own little palette i've yeah. got my own little brush i've got like a nice little paint set i've got an airbrush don't use it too much um but yeah we'll I've come on it. airbrushes because it causing the causing both of us a lot of heartache yeah. at the moment oh, um, horrible. Um, horrible but yeah i think uh i think there's um in business we talk about unconscious incompetence mm. conscious incompetence and then conscious competence and i was at the start of painting you're very much unconsciously incompetent like you don't know what you don't know <laughs> yeah. you just don't know anything that nah, you and, start and you're like oh yeah. i effed up i feel in, i'm in the middle stage now where mm -hmm. like you were just saying i'm conscious of my incompetence but i know how to what i need to do next yes. to get better yeah and that's yeah. part of the fun isn't it it is it is it's a learning curve it is a learning curve and uh sometimes it takes a little bit longer because like I mean, there's so many YouTube videos out there to to help get better at painting and whatnot. Yes. Sometimes you'll watch one and you're like, I know even less <laughs> than, yeah. than I do going yeah. into it because you're watching it and they're using these really fancy things and you're like, they might have a wet palette and you're like, oh, well, I need a wet palette now. You don't. No. <laughs> you don't. You can make one. And yeah. Then, then that's when another video comes in where you watch that video and you're like, oh, well, he does this specific thing. So I need to now do that. And you go to that YouTube video, it's like a rabbit yeah. hole of it, just YouTube's. And, and I think it, it can be. And um, first of all, on wet palettes, don't do what I did. So I made my own wet palette um, using an old uh, sponge from um, like a dish, dishwashing sponge. You know, you cut, <laughs> cut the Brillo pad bit off and then cut the sponge off. Was it a clean one, was it? Or? Well, oh, it I thought it was, no. but it obviously wasn't clean enough. <laughs> so the first time you used it, it's fine. Put it yeah. in a little Tupperware tub with the lid on, like an old takeaway tub, whatever. Sure. Came back in a couple of weeks, opened the tub full of mold. Oh, so I was like, ah! no. uh, yeah. um, Ooh, basing material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, don't do that. Yeah, um, yeah. But in terms of the YouTube stuff, there's, um, to start with, I watch a lot of YouTube about it, but sometimes you watch a video and then YouTube recommends another one. They're telling you something that's almost contradictory to the one yeah, you just watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh no. I know. So you need to find, um, find what's right for you. Definitely. But definitely. Um, in terms of painting as, as a part of the hobby, the mm. holy trinity of the hobby is, Playing, painting, and building, I guess, is the three, really. Yes, yeah. What order do they come in for you? You know what? Very similar to yourself, but mine has slightly changed recently. So yes. for me, my favorite part of this hobby is simply just playing the game. Yeah. I, I prefer just to have my have my army ready. 
I get to the tournament or I get to my friend's house and I'm just playing, yeah. you know, like just, there's no hassle. That's kind of like, and in, the, in a way, this is like, that's like the end goal of his hobby, isn't it? Because yes. you've got to do the other two beforehand. Yeah. Um, the next one on my list for me is painting. Right. Um, I like painting over building now. Now, and I think that's primarily because of the armies that I've I've currently now got. Mm. I've unfortunately had to start to magnetize my my units. Oh, yeah. So I've got Imperial Knights and Imperial Guard. Now Imperial Guard and Imperial Knights have a lot of weapon variations. On oh, your tanks for your guard, yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly about that. So un- like un- unlike I don't know, like Tyranids or something like that, or maybe some generic like ne- Necrons, for example, yeah. they're very very much what you get in the box is kind of what you have to build. You yes. can't really magnetize them. So they're you literally build them, you're done. Um, now that used to be one of my f- favorite parts of the hobby where you used to build it because it just used to get a lot more relaxing from it. But now that I'm having to drill holes, magnetize <laughs> it, get the super glue and make sure the, the magnets yeah. are the right way around, that's kind of made it go down the bottom because it's just... It's, it's another pain. level, isn't it? Like, of of um, it, and Complexity. It, yeah, and takes quite a bit of time if you it do does. it right because you can't mm-hmm. push that kind of stuff. Got to get the right size magnets. Yeah. The strength of the magnets has got to be good as well. Yeah. Um, and again, there's lots of YouTube videos out there, but they vary in, in yeah. Yes. Of yes. Size. Uh, yeah. Again, they can. They can really. You've got to be really careful because it can turn you to do different things. Yeah. And I, I think the the mis the mis, uh, misleading things about these YouTube videos that like, I want to go magnetize my bane blade, and the video itself was like thirty five to forty minutes long. Right. Now it's a thirty five minute video, but that's not going to take you thirty five minutes to magnetize <laughs> because you're watching the video. And then you're like, oh, he's done this one bit. Yeah. And you go away for 20 minutes and you're like, drilling yeah. the hole, you're getting it right, you get the measurements right, you're, you're gluing it, you make sure it connects properly. You come out of the video and you're only five minutes in, but you spent 20 minutes, 25 minutes making this one part. So it's like, yeah, yeah. although it's a 35 minute, 40 minute video, it's not going to take you that long. No, it's going to take you a lot longer. You're looking at two or three times that, aren't you, to actually yeah. get it done. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so for me, definitely playing, painting, and then building. But what about you, Dan? Yeah, it was the same, very much the same. Um, building I, I enjoyed, but um, paint, but painting just used to stress me out was why it was by <laughs> bottom. Playing is definitely my favourite. Yeah. Um, and, and But I, lately, um, I've found... Uh, I found a way to. I've, I've become more zen with my painting. Oh, so painting yeah. is number two for me now as Good. well. Good, yeah. But only just. And I think. I think also I've got. You get to a certain point when you when you're making an army. Like I've been going through that process of building the Jakari, and by mm. when you've built like. 50 models or something at yeah. the end of that you're just like I don't really want to build it for a while now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah are they like really fiddly to kind of get in place are they, um, or? they're not too bad they're not like flayed one fiddly oh, or God, um, yeah. tomb blade fiddly Shins. yeah um, so they're they're okay um and uh, in terms of, I started. I've just started doing my journey on magnetizing as well. Mm. One like the first unit I started with was Locust Heavy Destroyers because they mm. um, they base they they always snap off the bases. They've got that tiny little they do. Um, yeah. like tiny pole that joins the, the model to the base. Stupidest part yeah. of the model to, to yeah, have to connect it's, it's to the base. Right at like, the back. So if, yeah. the, if you if the model tilts at all, it just snaps off. Yeah. yeah. So I drilled one, magnetized it, um, put the magnets on the wrong way around, got them out, <laughs> managed to put them back in again. And That's then, another yeah. thing. If you get that wrong, yeah, that yeah. is because you super glue the magnets in. If you get that wrong, yeah. Oh, um, but then the second one I tried to do, he'd obviously snapped off his base so much that I'd super, I'd super glued him back on. There was probably about two or three, <laughs> like two mils of super glue there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you try and put the hand drill through that, and it, the, the <laughs> drill bit's just bending. It's going like, no, I'm not yeah, going through there, mate. No. So I don't know. I have to get the like power drill out and try and oh <laughs> the big guns. Yeah, that's, that's going to go one of two ways, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Snap the model. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll, hopefully yeah, not. We'll see how that goes. But I yeah, like so it. I think definitely um, uh, painting is. Uh, is, is number two but it's Good. way both of those are way below um playing is my favorite yeah, playing is i think everyone's most people's favorites isn't it yes um, but very nice but uh, i guess another thing is why do we paint dan why do we put off ourselves through this pain just yeah. to get to the, uh, the end hobby i mean up until recently i would only paint if i had an event coming up mm. um that was it <laughs> uh and so it was and that's partly was the problem so i would panic i was panic painting and then you get stressed and you don't enjoy it and then you don't want to paint anymore it's a vicious cycle isn't it it is like, it, it can be because it, it, i think that's a key word there it can be because in some ways that can be a bit more not uh, inspirational or motivation yeah motivation, isn't it because it's like oh after a tournament i want my models to look nice yes. when i get there so you do be like all right i'm going to start painting and you do have this like initial hype or buzz don't yeah, you Where like yeah. oh i'm going to get them all done and then as you're doing it you're like in my life <laughs> yeah. i want to die <laughs> like, but it's yeah. like you've got a tournament it's when you've got a tournament on saturday and you're still painting at like nine o'clock on friday night oh, and like, I just, that's I the worst yeah but yeah so i'm my own worst enemy in that respect so i'm um trying to um plan painting more so mm. that I'm, uh, um, I'm 
I'm doing it on um, at my own speed in yeah. my own time as as something to to enjoy. Yes, and that's um, you know some of the other reasons that we paint that you've written down here. If you want to take us through those mm-hmm. um, for me, yeah, yeah, no, no, for me, it's like I, I do. To, again, it depends on the situation. It depends on what year it is and such. But yeah. I, I do find it relaxing. Like I like. I know I will talk about like the pile of shame that we have at home. I almost like having a pile of shame because I get in and I'm like, ooh, what's my next kind of project that I'm going to work on? Mm. So I, you, I mentioned before, but now I'm working on my nights at the moment, mm. which I'm thoroughly enjoying. Yeah, looking good and already. It, it, it's because um, I've, it's a different style. So like I've been painting Necrons for well over a year now and i'm no expert at, at painting necrons but pretty good it, 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 it's a it's a nice change or a nice change of pace because i'm having to introduce myself to using an airbrush whereas in the past i've airbrushed just to do like buildings and such so mm. it's very bog standard stuff i just fill the paint pot and just endlessly v- v- up and down yeah. the the wall basically but now that i'm doing nights i'm actually trying to do a, a, a nice effect on some of the armor panels that yeah, we've you, got you've got some nice ham sort of um a color grade grading yeah. going on on the armor panels it, looks really good exactly which I, I just don't think you can do with a brush no, you so can't, easy no. you know or it's going to be really hard to do with a brush so i was like i really want to do it with the the, the nights because a it'll be easy because they're big big pieces to do and they won't be that difficult because it is literally just they're big pieces. So it is mm. kind of very similar to terrain, which is like nice little oh, one yeah, little line yeah. of brush, really. Yeah. So it wasn't like any special like nuts and, uh, nuts and crannies. Yeah. So I was really happy for that. But when I started doing the airbrush, oh my goodness, like one little issue at a time where I was just trying to, to paint it, it wouldn't come out the, the, the brush properly. So I had to sit there and mess around with it. Yeah. You know, someone at home who has an airbrush will probably be like, oh yeah, as soon as like, an issue happens, they're probably just thinking straight away, oh, not enough paint or not enough thinner or you know that maybe the, yeah. the the needles too far forward too far back yeah for me i'm just there back and forth just like touching every little <laughs> bit just be like what is yeah. going on here yeah, yeah. um but eventually i did manage to get it i'm, I'm gonna say work in quotation marks because i done one spray got it working and i went to go do the next one and it wouldn't work <laughs> I, I, for, I, I, if anyone's at home who knows how to airbrush i had to move the needle out and then push it back in again, and I was able to get a, another two sprays mm-hmm. from it, and I have to move the needle out and back in again. Doesn't seem right, does it? Well, I thought it was like, maybe the paint was too thick, so I was like, a bit more thinner, yeah. pushed it out, and then like held the nozzle, then sprayed, so like pushes back to mm-hmm. kind of clean it out. Um, that didn't work. So I was like, all right, so I dismantled it. I cleaned the entire, you know, the all of the section, you know, the, the front loop bit, and yeah. um, the needle itself, clean that, strip that off, um, clean the inside section where the air flows in and such, put it all back together and done the exact same thing. I'm just like, is it the paint maybe I'm using? Or yeah, yeah, is it the know. thinner? I, who knows? Who I've knows? Got Someone at home, if you know, let me know. <laughs> I, I need to need to get it ace. But regardless of that, I managed to finally get them working. It was really nice because, again, it's like, it's a different project and it's a different style of painting for me. So I'm very much happy that I've started just so I, I think, can see um, how I've done it. You've done the right thing in terms of starting it on something with bigger panels like Night's Night. Yeah. Um, and, but it opens up a whole new world of mm-hmm. opportunities if you can get a get it to work and you exactly start, you don't need to be investing rattle cans anymore because you nah. can you can prime and yeah. um put your first coach down with yeah um but it, you know even then like you know you're getting when you get to more advanced stuff like doing like glow effects yeah or, exactly um, color grading as you mm. were saying there's loads you can do with it yeah so it is i, I am going determined to master it but i'm having a lot of problems at yeah the moment, I, so. we'll get there we'll, we'll both get there eventually we'll yeah get there. what but else do you, why else do you paint them you know it's enjoyable i guess i fit in a relaxable yeah, you know it's, I mean, it's yeah. enjoyable I, yeah. I get i get i get a little bit out of it when i'm like i've done the effect that i want and i'm like that looks nice like yeah. i can't wait to show that to my friends and show yes. off and be like look what i've got <laughs> i got all the miniatures um so yes no I, I think it's definitely enjoyable and for me the last thing is that you know when you're watching your favorite podcast subscribe um <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you can be watching your, you can you can you can watch a podcast or watch a tv show whilst you're still painting which yes. i think is very nice i like to keep myself occupied with stuff like i do like watching a tv show but having to progress my painting knowledge and get my armies all painted for the next for the next tournament or for the next game is nice as well i think just comboing your hobbies i started i, I do like uh, sometimes listening to music when i'm um uh, painting but i found that um the the type of music affects my m- mood and my painting style mm-hmm. so if i'm listening to some really banging hip-hop i'm uh, it doesn't really work very well <laughs> i get I'm just like, yeah, nah, like, yeah. <laughs> and you tapping to, your feet yeah yeah i've got to put something on that's a bit um, more chilled <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm starting to learn. Um, the last last few times I painted, it was for a tournament, but mm. instead of getting stressed about it, I thought, well, I'm just going to let the chips fall where they may. I know I've got, I've got base colours down already, so they, yeah. they will class as table ready, or you know. Um, yeah. So I'll just see what I can get done in the rest of the time and I won't worry about it. Mm-hmm. And I and I just, and I did enjoy it. Good. And I think uh, giving yourself, um, 
I'm also, I don't like making mistakes. Mm. And you just, you, you have to let go and be prepared to make mistakes when you're painting. I think that's it. I think you've got to push yourself out there to try new things. Because if you don't try it, mm. you'll not know how it turns out. Yeah. And look, it's paint and you, you're going to sneeze. You're going to jolt, yeah. jolt. Like I've got my dog, whenever I'm painting, my dog like knocks my, <laughs> knocks my elbow. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. ah, she's cute, but go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. no, it's, it's harder. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's good to make mistakes. If you, if you make a mistake, you'll learn from it for next yes. time. Um, I mean, especially when I was doing my nights, I, I sprayed, the, I got the nice, you know, the nice even tones that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing the trim around the, the shoulder pads. Yeah. And I knew if I got my paint on the shoulder pad, yeah. then the effect is almost ruined because I can't brush over it's the effect because yeah it. because i have yeah. to spray it again and i would lose the trim so i was very careful when doing it all. oh it was horrible <laughs> like, jess would come close to us and i'd be like no ah, no everyone back up everyone to me at a distance <laughs> back back to uh, those times um but yes no um what about for you when it comes to like how do you find painting in general um yeah that's similar i'm starting to um uh i'm starting to get to the point where I can I can just relax and enjoy it, and I'm starting mm. to even think about planning what I want to paint next. Mm. So it's becoming part rather than being a chore, it's becoming an active part of the hobby, which nice. is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have like many projects that you want to do in the future that you know you want to learn? Or I mean, what I'm terrible for is painting um, up to a, 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 a kind of very basic mm. tournament standard, like to a table ready, and I and I say. I'll go back and have the highlights uh, that and later yeah. and then I never do. Yeah, do. So I've got like probably 40 Necrons that I need to go back and just and finish basically. Is that because that unit done so badly in the yeah. games? <laughs> like you're just like, oh, F those guys, I'm not doing that. Or is it like more? No, it's just, I just, um, I just an absolute butterfly. So I'm always <laughs> on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, but I will, I, That's so I, I've got a few Necrons I want to go back. The f very first Necrons are painted um, that, have, that, are, that are like drowning in thick paint. I'm just going to um, scrub them and do them, like paint mm. them again. Um, but at the moment, I'm just working through my Jakari and, and trying to um, trying to enjoy that. Yeah, I think I do look back on some of my models and I'm like, oh, like, I, you know, one thing I hear about when you paint someone is that, you, you know, you, as you paint, you get better and you learn different techniques mm -hmm. and you learn new things. The worst part is that you, you come back to like your first set of warriors that you painted and you look at them and you look at your new set and you're like, yeah. oh God, like yeah. what have I done? Yeah. Like, look how bad that looks. And I sometimes do want to go back and like add a bit more detail, maybe, yeah. maybe some extra little null oil bits here and there for a bit more, I guess just weather effects but at the same time you can't keep doing that because your army i mean my army and my necron army is massive now mm. like, i can't go back through my entire army and highlight all the stuff i want to even though i said i would i've got too much yeah i've got far too much to do that and i think the thing is yeah that's it it's it's not a job it's a hobby so yes it depends on um on on your feelings about that and i think you're in a good place with that like if you if you if the mood takes you next weekend and you want to do some highlighting of some necrons you can do some can't you yeah it's there if you want to do it ah, i've but got if the you, pain got the brushes yeah, but they can still you can you can still put them on the table and have <laughs> a good game with them as they are yeah definitely. And that's the most important thing i think so uh, definitely what, what about you i think for me you know we've talked briefly about like the tournaments and such and mm -hmm. i do like painting you know uh, like as a whole i think i do like the aspect of tournaments upcoming just to get myself ready to paint yes. kind of thing because i think once i start painting although i might not enjoy it i'll then finish the tournament and i've got this like ooh, i want to do it more yeah like, i want to get more i, I want to get more painting in i want to get more things done and i think the motivation for me at the minute is that since i've just finished all of my necrons now and um, bark up the tomb blades but they can go away i'm not gonna be <laughs> um I, I've, I've i've started my nights and the reasons particular why i started my nights for is that i only have what eight models to paint nice. for, for for it and that number sounds a lot better than like a 20 squad of warriors yeah, kind of thing definitely. so you know i've started painting my my six ar armages that i've got and they're looking good mm -hmm. and i'm happy that you know i'm looking at them and they're almost done obviously like null oil and do the weapon choices and such Bless them in the holy null oil. exactly yeah. yeah you know um but once they're done i've then only got two of our models to paint now granted they are the two big ones <laughs> either, either side of me and dan but it's still nice to see oh i've only got two models left to, to do yeah. and then my full knight army is ready to play yeah, that is definitely the attraction of like doing knights or something like custodies is you're going to, you know, there's, there's the model count is lower and mm. it means you can spend a bit more time on them, doesn't it? Yeah. Just to get them right. That's it. And I think since they're such big models, you kind of want them to be like this showroom-esque kind yeah. of like look to them. Like yeah. when people walk in the room, they're going to notice them the straight away because they're the biggest models there. So yes. I do want to spend a little bit more time on these ones just to make sure they are 
how I want them and like they are the eye catchers kind of thing because yeah. I think when I go to tournaments and I see other night players I don't know what it is but other night players just seem to have really nice nice nights <laughs> like they've got really well painted ones and I ask them oh how do you do this effect how do you do this and most of them are just like oh I had a bucket of null oil and I just dipped it in yeah. and, dipped it out, and I'm like eh I'm like what I'm like oh I think, yeah because of the way the GW designs the um, the weapons and also the legs like those shades do a lot of work don't they because yeah. there's lots and lots of nooks and crannies and crevices that, that give, yeah. give you that depth and texture mm -hmm. Um, exactly. So yeah, the holy null mile now is definitely uh, so getting good. baptized so in it. Yeah, I'm just going to add a little detail, like a little green, little like red wire here and there on the, yeah. on, the, on the chassis of the armor, yeah. and then when you dip it in the oil, it'll just now look yeah. nice. And then dry brush with the um, these are all different techniques that people can use, which we'll talk about in another episode. Yes, um, but yeah, then dry brush a little bit of silver just to bring out those little yeah. edges a bit better as well. Make it pop, baby. Make it pop. Let's go. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I find painting. I do quite like it. And what what inspires you to paint? Mm. So for me, uh, there's a couple of different things. I'm we briefly mentioned about the tournament you know yeah, the yeah. upcoming tournaments that's good but one of the big things for me is i think it's when you have a fun game now you have a fun game there's a specific unit that does like so well or so bad yeah you're kind of like mm, i want to add something more to you I now love that. just to kind of give you that little uh so that you, representation if on the field if you've done well you get a little painting medal mm -hmm. yeah yeah that. that's it little uh, little uh, do, little paint on a little badge but you also um uh in ninth edition oh. scorex came with a little guy called a plasma site still use them in tenth but in ninth yeah. the, you roll a dice and on um uh, so you powered up your scorex but yeah. you roll a dice yeah and on a one he killed one of your scorpex he did not one mortal wound you put three mortal wounds on a scorpex and killed it yep um and you 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 uh you incorporated that into your painting didn't you every time every time i played this unit now <laughs> I, I was always like everyone was screaming being like scorpex are the way to go they're cheap oh, they're I better than them. lich guard they're tougher they've got more wounds I absolutely oh, love them. you love them i could never play them now whenever i've ran them i always had the uh the plasma uh, plasma, site, yeah. plasma site with it Every time I had to roll a D6 to buff this unit, it was a two to five, uh, sorry, two to six, you got buffed. It yep. was pretty good. It was actually really good. Mm -hmm. And on a one, you still got the buff, but one of those models got destroyed. Yeah. Every time I rolled a one without fail. <laughs> so what I started doing was um, I had a little, um, after I'm the Nilac Dynasty, so I've got gold trim all over it. Yes. So what I started to do was every time it killed one of those Quebec lords or uh, units, I'd then mark it with a little gold strip <laughs> just to be like, yep. So this it's got a little is, tally of her. It's got, it's got five so far. <laughs> it's awful. Brilliant. I think I only played them like six times. It's honestly. So, yep. So they, they've been christened. They've got all the little marks Fantastic. on there. And I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I still struggle to play them now. Those scorebacks. Uh, then unfortunately, I, I love them. But unfortunately, they're not very good in the uh, in, uh, tenth. tenth. Yeah. Nah. They've, um, nah. They can't, they haven't quite found how to eat their home yet. Yeah. But hopefully they will. I mean, yeah probably just need a points drop um, yeah. Was, uh, but yeah in, yep. in ninth they were amazing but i absolutely love those mm -hmm. little details and that uh and the way that you can use paint to kind of reward or, yeah. or mark a mark a naughty model <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah what about yourself Have you got anything um i mainly i think um it's just pride like i want my army to be presentable um um and I want my opponent and me to both be able to have an immersive game. So mm. I mean, it makes just makes such a massive difference. If you're playing on a on a plain dining room table with grey models mm. and unpainted terrain, um, it's you can have a fun game. Don't get us wrong. Oh yeah. But it, but if you are playing on a battle mat with painted terrain and both armies are looking nice, it adds can, that it flavor. Just, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it yeah, really yeah. does. I think like, you're right. I played against um, our friend uh, Dan yesterday. Um, his custodies are lovely. He got um, the first. Uh, event we all went ever went to Warhammer Fest last year. Mm. He got his custodians got shortlisted for armies on parade. Yes, um, because he's, he's done some incredible stuff on the gold there. So playing so. Uh, I, I, in some instances I've got my Jakari painted and some I haven't mm -hmm. so the, and where where I'm facing off against him where it's painted it looks lovely and where mm. my, my um, legions of grey are it's like uh, it looks yeah, a, it's a bit different quick. isn't yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah so I've, I've got to get the paintbrush out this week and try and try and um, address that that's but that's yeah. that's the big one and the other one for me is in terms of learning and improving um, in the same way as I'm, uh, I enjoy the journey of trying to improve as a player I want to, I'm starting to enjoy the journey of trying to improve as a painter. Mm. And there's so many little tricks and techniques and different yeah. painting ways, which again, like you said, we'll come on to on a, in a proper video. But yeah. um, that I, I'm 
love learning about these things and then I'm, I'm gaining the confidence to try and implement them to try try just try something new and mm. see, see how it goes so do you reckon then so thinking about that then do you reckon like tournaments kind of like or like just general kind of meetups and such help people paint a bit more because yeah it's a good thing i didn't even mention like you're you you've got your army of gray versus an army that's painted terrain that's painted mm. it kind of gives you that inspiration as you say to be like oh Tell you what, mine's looking, I'm the one falling over here. Like, yeah. I'm the one out of sync with everybody yes. else. So, I guess almost surrounding yourself with people who, who are good for you. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, to, who are good in the hobby to kind of helps you or gives that inspiration to be like, oh, actually, I want my army to look as good as yours when you're on there. And yes. People do kind of, it's quite nice as well. Um, well, I haven't mentioned it, but um, when people take photos, yeah. especially when they walk past, like, that's a very nice army. Would you mind take, like, if I can take a photo? Yeah, and you feel you're like, oh, it's always like, oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna cost you money um but yeah no that's a good it's a good a little way of thinking about it as well yeah um i've got one more way on there mm. which is a bit more of a sad story yeah this is a sad story now i've not mentioned it loads um actually no, i don't think i mentioned no i haven't no, talked not mentioned it. it at all basically i had an instagram master collie minis um i loved it I, I i used to use that to basically post my miniatures that i had on there and that was like a little inspiration for me when i was it was like i mean it started when i was in like just after lockdown where mm -hmm. i was like well i kind of want to have show people my progression and like i want to look back on how well i've came from how bad i was yeah to, it's like to a now. document a record and you can see yeah. you, you can see you could see the improvement over the yeah. weeks and months in, in your in your models exactly unfortunately about three weeks ago four weeks ago now i got hacked all my social media has got absolutely rinsed and um unfortunately they got on my instagram now the way instagram works is that you've got to do a video of yourself to then get your account back so they can match to make sure that you're facial thing rec uh, matches yes, matches the pictures on your account yeah. exactly however my pictures that i have were all warhammer yeah. so i didn't have any just, pictures of no me. pictures of you it's just necrons exactly you should have just sent them a picture of the silent king or something i tried no <laughs> so, that's, try so that? that's it so <laughs> so that's it so when you're recording the video you've got to like move your face back and forth to get like the structure mm -hmm. so there's me with my silent king and a few other necron warriors trying to like match it up to get to get like, this like, is the same model yeah as, to get the uh, angle yeah. it was so hot it didn't work at the end oh, of the day but I, yeah because it's got like match the facial structure and like when i got zoomed in it kept on breaking i managed to get one video sent across and i think it was the um it was my my nightbringer deceiver oh um, yeah my katan deceiver because that has like the, the structure there and there's nothing in the way to kind of block it off mm -hmm. um i luckily got that one sent sent through but they, they rejected it unfortunately yeah. saying that it wasn't there and if you try and contact their support they don't get in touch either the, um, yeah it, the Instagram support is shite yeah, yeah so it's really bad it, it unfortunately looks like my account was it got taken over um, they then deleted all my photos after about a week. They then changed the ad. I think they botted the followers because I went from about 350 subs, uh, followers to about 900 and odd. I'm, no, not, I'm no. not. I'm not that popular on it. But um, they bought that, and then the name got changed, and I can't find the account. Right. So whenever I try and log in now, it then just says that your email address isn't registered because they changed the email yeah. and blocked me out. So I've completely lost that account. So I think it would be great to get you back on there. You yeah, should get, you should definitely set up a new account because it's. Um, it was. I. I really <laughs> enjoyed following you, and, and I got it inspired. Like. I did I enjoy it. Yeah. Well. It gave me inspiration to paint uh, necrons. So if you are going to start an Instagram, or if you have an Instagram with your painted models, please put a picture on there of yourself. Yes. It, honestly, I, 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 as soon as I get my, as soon as I make a new Instagram, I'm going to take a few pictures of myself every now and then, just put that on there, just to help with facial, facial recognition. Because yes. if you don't, Instagram support is not very good at getting back to you. And I, when I, looked I mean, mine, you can imagine that they're probably drowned in this kind of thing all the time because it happens a lot. But yeah, yeah. Do, take as many precautions as you can, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So um, please do. Yeah, it was really just, it, was, it made me very angry. Um, uh, I was super frustrated because yeah. I was just like, oh, I was like, I had all the, luckily, um, I, I, I forward think I had all the, I've got all the pictures saved right. so I can re-upload them. Yeah. But that's going to take time. I had loads on there. Yeah, you, you know? did. And I don't want to like reshare so I've already done. No, so. no, stick them all back I, on. I, I might do like it. Might... If it's going to be a documented record, stick them all back yeah. on because it'd be nice for people I, to see. I, you know, it was mass economies. I might make the same name but I might just make it more of my, 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 my social one opposed yeah. to like my, my necro one because then if I, if I just keep it with Warhammer then I'm going to be knack out if i get hacked again for whatever yeah, reason yeah. so i think it's gonna be more of a social one next time um but yes definitely yeah uh, definitely do instagram if you haven't because that's really good yes. i really enjoy that side of things um but what about next then so this is a, a controversial one for me but mm. how do you find basing models and do you like it more or less than i absolutely regular? love it right? do you yes um oh my God. and but it, uh, i think <coughs> basing Basing to a good standard yeah. is much easier than painting to a good standard. Yeah. And also, a very good base can deflect or distract from the fact that your model isn't perhaps ah, as good as you want it to be. Right, okay, fair so, enough. So yeah. I've, I have um, I really enjoy basing a lot, It's my f um, and I think I'm quite good at it. 
I think to start with, I got, I was, um, uh, I use a few different techniques, like I use sand and mm. um, cat litter sometimes for rocks, which is quite Excuse cheap. me? Yeah. <laughs> cat litter? Great, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. right. Yeah. The cheap stuff, not the um, not the super absorbent stuff, because that just absorbs all, just sinks, just oh, paint, right, sucks okay. all the paint up. Right. You like, you paint it and then you go back to it and it's like, it's like I, yeah, I just got gone. Look yeah. at me. Yeah. <laughs> Look what you made. It's just a little bit chubbier, but yeah. it's got no paint on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, and um, uh, I got a bit I addicted to tufts and... Um, I think to start with, I was putting a few too many tufts on the models. You don't need lots of like loads of grass yeah. tufts. You need oh, one there's like little, yeah. little single bit of grass. Yeah, in the so game you can, like you can buy them from Army Painter and Gamers Grass and places like that. And they come on like, it's almost like a little bit of um, baking paper. And they're, they're adhesive, so they've got... Oh, um, okay, right. But I would always add a little bit of um, glue mm. and to stick them on. Yeah. But yeah, and, 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 and you know, and the, the basic techniques like... I, um, if you're using like sand or grit, mm. put then you paint it, then you null oil it or agro shade right. and then you dry brush it, and then ah, you, you okay. can, you're getting a good, you're getting some nice um, effect for for little investment. Mm. And if you're strategically placing some rocks and rubble and stuff like that on some grass tufts, it can really look nice. Yeah, that's interesting. That'd be fair because I am. You're almost switching us over <laughs> because I was going to come in here and be like, I hate it. I honestly cannot stand it. Now now that I think about it though, it's maybe because of the choice of base that I chose for my Necrons. Mm. So for the Necrons, I got a 3D print mm. of a Necron Tomb World. Yeah, I love now, it. But that unfortunately meant I had to then glue that on. I had to then unclip all my Necrons that were currently based yeah. and then glue that on top. Yeah. I also had to then um, spray that no oil it, put a little bit of green on there. And it was a, it was a lot of work for something that doesn't look as good. I think, I mean, I do love your bases. I think they're great. Well, um, you'll have to take some pictures and put mm. them on a screen. Yeah. So I think some of them look really nice because the way you've done the, the green really pops against the metal. The metal yes, looks it looks nice. It does, but it's, it was a lot of work. Yeah. And now that I think back, I'm like, what you just mentioned where you just, you know, glue, sand, dry yeah. brush, no oil. Oh. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> beautiful time and saving. Particularly wise. When, when we started, I, I'd, I'd glued all my models onto the bases to start with, so I, um, and I didn't know how to get them back off, so I couldn't have done what you'd done. How did you get them off? Do you use a scalpel or something? Or <laughs> no, I just, I, 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 I should have used the, the scalpel. The yeah, I just used the clip as, but then I broke some of most of the feet. Uh, so when I came to gluing them back on, the base, the feet weren't flat anymore. Yeah. So they were just like this misshapen <laughs> creature. Well, it's so kind of Necron, isn't it? It yeah. is, it is. But when I was, it didn't really help when I was coming to glue them back onto a flat surface. Aye. Um, so now they're a bit, uh, they fall off quite Aye, easily. So right. I've got, I've got to use super glue on them now just to make sure they're nice and secure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, actually the only base thing that I like that I've done, which I've not done for the entire army yet, is my, my, um, my tyranids that I've got. Yes. So, oh, yes. yeah, so I've got the, like a lava base kind mm. of texture that I like for that, where it's like the, I put like little like shades of red below, like red, yellow, and orange yeah, for lava. And then I do the molten earth yes. texture. So when you do molten earth, what that does is that it cracks on the base. So it looks like a lava effect. I think it looks amazing. No, um, it does look really good. But the issue is that, I've got a lot of Necron, a lot of tyranids to, to, to base and molten earth comes in box, like, Tubs of this. Yeah, it's quite expensive and the tubs are quite yeah. small. You, um, and um, so, and if you're doing uh, big mm -hmm. beasts, the bases are quite big, aren't they? Yes. And to get a nice crackle effect, you need to use a thick layer. You can't do a thin one. So yes. you're using half the pot for, if not half to more, to, to the entire pot for one big unit. What about cork board? Would that work? It would. I've only just started using that for my knights. I've put cork All right, yeah. on the bottom because that was a, a tip from my friend, uh, from friend Lewis. Yes. Um, but I, do, I was going to do a snowy texture yeah. for the bottom. And uh, there is some nice snowy paint that you can get from Citadel, mm. which look quite nice. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that. But then I'm like, oh, if I do that, do I need, then need to do like, like I don't know, like sill or like uh, like snowy textures uh, on, on the uh, night do yeah. i want to do that or want to add more work so i'm tempted now to reduce the amount of snow i was originally going to do and just have like a snowy sandy or rocky kind of area yeah i think that would match quite nice yeah i mean that's the most important thing about basin is is a bit of visual interest yeah but if you are um a bad or bang average painter like me then you need and um, they can really help um bring your models to life like i've, I've yeah. had people it's all, it's funny because it almost feels sometimes like a backhanded compliment. Maybe it's me being too sensitive. But so I've had people come up and they'll put the models up and go, "Oh, that base looks really nice." Mm. And, you think, and, and you can Not even take, anything you about can take that one day. way or the other, can't you? <laughs> you can. Wow, this. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's a very nice model. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> You mentioned nothing about your painting style. Yeah, like, well, that's a nice weapon. <laughs> well, basing, yeah, love. I've, I'm uh, I'm really into it. I'm um, 
I've got loads of Necron bits, and I don't really <coughs> want to put Necron bits on my Jukari or on my Necrons. But when I do my I next like army, I'm, I might use some Necron bits. On I them. feel like I'm portraying them. Like I've got yeah. like I've got part of my Tyranids, my guard, and such. Where I'm like, oh, I could put a little uh, guard bit here, but I'm like. No, like that's yeah. my kind of model. Like, I, I, that's my army that I don't want to yeah. like, d- disregard. Um, actually, funny little story. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll call about. So Daniel, I was, I've got, I was playing some flayed ones um, against the game. Oh yes, honestly. So playing some flayed ones. Uh, love. I mean, I love flayed ones. Now they are a pain to to, to build and a pain to to, uh, to paint. Yes. Um, but so took ages to get them all done. But I had, I had about forty of them. So I was playing with these on the table, and um, one of them got knocked off. And then all I heard was just this uh, crunch. <laughs> and I looked over. I looked at my friend Dan. I looked at him. Dan looks down, moves his foot, and he looks back over. And I'm like, "You're right." Starts kicking his, <laughs> starts kicking his feet under the table. I'm like, "You okay?" And he's like, "Oh, fine, mate." And I was like, "Stepped on mall, didn't you?" And he's like, "Looking." He's like, starts laughing. He's like, "Aye." <laughs> and I was like, "How is it?" And he goes. <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> it, 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 it's yeah. bad. If you don't know uh, Necron Flayed ones, they are quite delicate yeah. models. Um, yeah. yeah, they will not. I mean, not many models will start, no. up to, to start being stunned, but these ones definitely do these not. These no. definitely do not. So uh, uh, he, he, he 3D printed me a spare Steve Flayed one model, yes. which I really like. And yeah. he, he did, did get me a, a big Flayed one as well, a little, one of the little models, which, nice. I'll, which I'll happily appreciate. Um, but then he, he, he then leans down, picks up the, the, the remnants of what they were, and he goes, can I use this as basing material? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, rub that in. Why don't you? Yes, Gosh. go ahead. But yes, and it's on his, I think it's on his Gazgul. It is on so, Gaz, yeah. yeah. You put it on Gazgul, yeah. So, you know, at least I see Gaz destroying my models whilst my model is <laughs> also on his model. So it's quite nice to see. But yes. That, well, that would be a nice thing to do with Gaz as well. Like if um, um like if he uh, brings his Gaz against my Jukari and, and tables me, uh, yeah. I'll have to give him a... Ah, uh, a little sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, look, there, there you go, go. man. He just steps on <laughs> it and sprinkles it on. <laughs> Imagine doing that. Imagine, like, you, it's a big play to keep you. You play it like, oh, if I win against you today, you have to give me one of your models. <laughs> yeah. And you just crush it and sprinkle it on your bases. You're like, yeah, this is all the armies I've, I've beat. That'd be quite oh, funny. yeah, wouldn't it be a nice bit of uh, sort of um, <laughs> law for our little bubble yeah. meta, wouldn't it? Should I add that into a tournament? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, get, be like, oh, look, uh, tournament rule. Danger, yeah, yeah you, you lose a model every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, but what are your thoughts, moving on to a different kind of subject then, what are your thoughts on getting people to paint your models for you? Yeah, now... Because um, you've done it a couple of times now, haven't you? I think, I think I've think i had five or six different people paint my models, like mm-hmm. not counting my kids. Um <laughs> I suppose I should count them because they make me pay them as well. But um, <laughs> so I've, uh, I've uh, my old friend Lewis has painted some for us. Yeah, um, thanks, nice painter. Yeah, he's a good, really good painter. Um, there's a couple. There's a guy at the uh, Wildlings called Craig who's doing a, a lovely job on uh, some of my warriors, mm. and he's doing a few more for me. I've got an exchange program with Craig because he's more of a Sigma player than 40k. Oh, okay. So I've been getting this. Um, I mentioned, might have mentioned it in the past, but I'm getting this Age of Sigma. The Age of Sigma version of Imperium magazine is called Stormbringer. Mm. So it comes every week, and you get models with it, which I'm never going to build or paint. So <laughs> he's like, "Oh, I'll have that." Ah, and so, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're doing a deal rather than him like exchange. I, I pay him to paint, and he pays me for Stormbringer. Nice, we just nice. It's just a barter system. That makes sense. So that's going well, and he's a love, like a really good painter. Um, so I'm not asking him to paint to his best standard, but he, st- he still, I just said, just do the tabletop, but he always does, goes over a, and above. A bit of, yeah. But yeah, I was going to say, so it's quite nice, good for him. Really good. Good. So in that respect, I'm very happy. Other people, I've sent models, like I've found people online and sent models away, and that's been mixed, mm. um, really mixed. Like, Is that from like Fiverr and such, is it? Or is that like private people? Or, like, uh, just finding people websites? on like WhatsApp, um, WhatsApp groups and things like that, 40K WhatsApp right. groups and discords and that. You can find mm-hmm. pe- commission painters. Mm. Um, and I uh, just, just I thought I'll give it a try just to see whether it's any, um, and it wasn't um, wasn't quite what I wanted. Right. But uh, and again, I've used a local commission painter, Guy in Gateshead. Um, he's called um, called Risky Paints on Instagram, mm. and he did a really good job as well. And do you give him like a little bit of insight? Be like, oh, yeah. like, this is the style I'm looking for. So or? yeah, you always. I'm always. I mean, most of them, are, you know, if they are proper commission painters, they will, um, or they will ask. They will usually ask the questions like, you know, what. So I'll take pictures of models I've done mm. and then I'll explain what, like, you know, I'll put Rune Lord, basically for Necrons, put Rune Lord Brass and, and Lead oh, here, nice. here, Lead Belcher here, this shade right. here, or so on. And that gives them an idea. And even mm. if they haven't got that, those exact paints, they'll probably have an equivalent in the range. Right, yeah. got you. So um, the, the um, you will get, in terms of paint, commission painting, painting takes time. Mm. So you have to be prepared to, to understand it's going to cost money. Mm. Um, 
So if you've got uh, friends that'll do it for mates' rates, then that's great. Um, yeah. And the other thing to think about is um, it's disparity in colours. So mm. even though I've sent the paint recipe off to commission painters before and photographs, the models that have come back have been a, a different um, mm. colour. Right. Yeah, different, Got it. And, and quite a markedly different colour. Uh, okay. Now I don't I, I don't necessarily mind that it's not the end of the world, mm. but some people it would like really might not be very yeah. happy like that. Got you. Got I you. mean, the unit I've got, uh, some of the units I've got painted are units that I don't really run at the moment. So, um, and I couldn't be bothered to paint them. So I thought I'll just get someone else to do it and see, and see what I think. Mm. Um, so it's not the end of the world. In, do you recommend, do you reckon you'll do it again in the future? Yeah, I've got, um, there's a young lad who's, um, I think he's uh, 17 or 18, who's uh, like son of one of my friends, who's a um, really good painter. Mm. And uh, he he's done a few, he did a unit of Immortals for me um, last year. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him to do some more because it's like he hasn't got a job because um, he's still at school, so it's like extra money for him. And good. he really enjoys painting, and he does a good job, so it's like a win win. Ah, oh, fair and enough. It's just for things like things that you were talking about, like that you don't want to paint yourself. Yeah. So there's some models I'm like, like I've got the Void Dragon, I haven't painted mm. that, but I want to have a go. Have a go at it till I'm a bit better. But he's not as bad as you actually think he right. is here. But I, I remember painting mine, and that wasn't as bad. It's yeah. it's quite literally just the the neck one colors on the on the on the on the body. Yeah, and then the the all the electric that's coming off. Just just literally, if you want a light color, go. Uh, and coat it with white yeah. darker color go black and then just put the, the the colors on top so i add in the blue so i literally just turn white and all i do in my mind was literally just covered it all in blue once and then i looked at how, certain areas where that were more deeper and i was like right blue there like a blue again so just darker blue yeah. and then i do a third coat where it's so like it's a nice gradient effect nice. um and then you can just highlight with a bit of white here and there so not as bad as you think yeah i'm gonna really give it really a good. bash and then mm -hmm. but there's other things like tomb blades i've got no intention to paint any more tomb blades because of pain in the ass i was about to say the same yeah. thing i've got nine i yeah. might I, they're the last necrons that i actually need to paint and i don't want to yeah. i just don't i don't like the thought of doing them i just kind of not fun models to paint because they're no, quite fiddly they were, and crap to build as well yeah, so yeah i might i might consider getting someone to paint those for me yeah because but i think i definitely would i would definitely my advice from my experience is not them saying that all commission painters bad like i said i've had some good commit really yeah. good commission painters but keep it local if you've got people who um uh who at your local club or in your friend group mm. who are happy to help you out I, I don't expect anyone to do it for free so give them something and if yeah. they won't take any money buy them a present or something but, that's it yeah, yeah. but definitely i, I the the challenge is always going to be is it won't come back exactly as you paint mm. yours so you need to you just need to be careful on that yeah, one yeah. there has to be a bit do, of compromise here's a question do you get what you get do you get what you pay for or not sometimes sometimes because yeah. like yeah because like i mean i've watched videos online like squid mod does really good videos where he gets like commission paint nice from on fiverr for that that yes. very his once that he gets back sometimes the ones that are the cheapest do better job yeah. because they're maybe upcoming and they might be just be starting it and they're like, oh, well, I want to prove that I do good work to get like better photos, better pricing, mm. better, you know, more work. So I, I tend to see those ones do well. I see, based on his videos, the people who do the worst job, sorry, you're people that are out there, are the ones that are in the middle bit who aren't that great yet. They aren't like high tier models, but the ones that aren't paying the cheapest because yes. those ones are like in that awkward zone of like, oh, well, I think I'm good, but I'm not good enough yet to to paint really a yeah. lot. So I'm like in the middle kind of thing. Now that what that that'll be wrong for a lot of people out there, but that's kind of what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, Squid we, we can only go on what we've what we've experienced, and I've, I would fully agree with that. And I've had you know I've had some I've had some um, models come back that have been great and have gone where they've mm -hmm. gone over and above. Like I said, particularly Craig's a good example of that. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that my um, friend son uh, painted for us the same, um, and then. Uh, I had a guy who um, risky paints that painted. I think it was ten warriors for like um, thirty quid, and I mean, the tabletop standard. But his tabletop standard is as good is like was at the time was at least as good as what I could do, nice. if not better. Yeah, because he just because he knows what he's doing. He, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I provided them primed and, and based or whatever, um, like the, the sand on the base and everything. Yeah. he just had to paint them. But because he's so good with an airbrush, he can rattle through them. Get through. Yeah, take nice. take him a couple of hours or whatever, and he was like happy days. Class. So. He, he, you're definitely right, um, and I think the, there are levels, aren't there? So I'm looking to get painted to tabletop standards all the time, just because to get get my backlog done. Yeah. Um, and then, but some of the models, like the Silent King, for example, mm. I haven't painted him, 
I'm, he's a big if, project, like, if, isn't he? If yeah. you're gonna, but if you're gonna get a commission painted to paint that, you want it painted above tabletop standard, don't you? Yeah. So you're looking at hundreds of pounds, probably. Easily, yeah, yeah easily, at least over a hundred pound. Oh, I think, yeah. I think definitely, if you want yeah. it done to a good standard, and, and the likes of like the professional studios, like Siege Studios, would cost you like an arm and a leg. Yeah, like, well, yeah. A lot of money. I mean, I remember paying my selling king. I'm glad he's doing. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, my goodness, he yeah. too was like again. It was one of those things again where you watched the video. I watched Duncan's video on it, and um, where the video was like an hour long, mm-hmm. but it's not an hour. It won't take you an hour no. to paint. <laughs> it's because he's like, okay, so I'm just going to apply a little bit of oil like this, and he's like, right now, go do the entire model. And he just obviously fast forward yeah. and he's there so then I'm there for about an hour no yeah. oil the entire, entire yeah. thing so it's, it takes a long time doing those big models yes it does so Pit. yeah there's um, very um, but I think if you keep it my advice would be either use someone that someone else has used if you're using someone you've never you, like you don't know that's like a complete stranger who's mm. a commission painter find someone that's used that's used them before so you know yeah. what you're getting um, but my um, even better than that I think is try and keep it local yeah um, people you know yeah. so you can call them out and find them if they do wrong <laughs> well, yeah. No. And, yeah I just think and I think well I just think when they're local it's easier because you can physically take them one of your models true you know so they yeah. can see them and then it's easier to gauge the um, the paint and mm. so forth yeah um, I like it but you, you you haven't had any done yet no I've not and the thing is I haven't had any done yet and that's that's because I guess I I do enjoy the painting yeah. now I've got to a point now where there are very similar where there are some models that I don't want to paint like the Necron Tomb Blades which I probably will get done um, um, but I thought it was more of an interesting question because like, you know, we, I've been to a couple of tournaments where I've seen like people who have just base coated the three basic colours oh, who, who are just ready to, who, who are, you know, maybe, I don't want to label them, but I've seen a couple of meta chasers out there that basically mm. just paint the three colours because Eldar are the best army out there now. So they've got the airbrush and just done 3D like, print one and just 3D three print, colours on three colours and they're just there to win to get ITC yeah. points. At the end of the day, look, I guess that goes back to our very first question. You know, what do we enjoy the hobby most? Mm -hmm. If someone enjoys playing the most and getting those points, who are we to judge? Well, that's it. Yes, it might be somebody that just doesn't have the confidence to paint. But, I mean, if you, yeah, realistically, if you've got access to a 3D printer and three rattle cans, it's probably probably a better choice. (laughs) Yeah, Um, exactly, exactly. um, It's a bugbear of mine. It's one of many bugbears. Start a segment like Dan's soapbox on this, but I'm not going to rant on here about it, but... Um, I think uh, I dislike the three colors rule, mm. and I um, Vanguard Tactics. What they they their philosophy is one I agree with is that mm. if you if you go into events, every um, main part of the model should be painted in the appropriate color. Oh, so I would take that to mean um, I'm not talking about. Oh, you haven't painted your grenades like Got you know yeah, the yeah, little details. Yeah. I'm more like, like you know chest, chest, head, yeah. arms, legs, gun, mm. like weapons. And um, a backpack if we've got one, the big, the, the main bits. Yeah. And so as long as the, if the gun's painted a different color to the rest of the model, um, and uh, then, you know, like for a yeah. Space Marine, you're looking at one color for, for almost all of that, and mm. then the gun being a different color. Mm-hmm. And that's it. It's not difficult. And also based properly as well is the other thing, you know, the base should be done. See, um, I, I see, I always panic about that because I've got a few Necron models who have like pulled them out a little range of like army or built a list that I want, and then are based. And I do stand there, I'm like, I can't be asked, <laughs> but like I know I need to for those extra ten points, but I just do not want to. Yeah, uh, but I mean, for a new army, you really should base them for it, especially for a tournament. You should. I, I, I don't like to, but you need to base them for a tournament, basically. I think so. It, it, it is classed as the as the free rule thing. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I, I I can understand why tor- tournaments allow it, and because the difficulty is, is how would you judge something like that? Like like I was joking before about grenades, but. At what point does it class as um, a main part of the model that's been painted? That's true. You yeah, because you you will, you will get some asshole who's like, yeah. well, yeah, you've painted yeah. the gun, but you haven't painted his ammo pouch or yeah. whatever, and it, it, it just it would cause more problems. Yeah, than some and I think we touched on three D prints, but worth mentioning, we're mm. fine with three D prints. Oh yeah, I think what we're talking about mainly, primarily, is when someone has like just the free color based on there and you're like right I'm, we've seen I'm, it I'm, yeah. we've seen yeah. it at events where someone's like um is brought whatever is the latest hotness yeah and has just um as 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 um primed it white and then yeah. just sprayed literally like three colors on it yeah and said it's done yeah and that's just it's not it comes, it comes back to what we're talking about as well about immersion and stuff you know if a model's painted to a even a very basic very basic standard of like um 
two colours on the on the head and, bo- and body and arms and legs, and then one colour on the gun. Three that's your three colours, and, yeah. and a bit of uh, just some effort on the base, even if you just put PVA and sand on it. Yeah, it, that's much more immersive than um, I mean, three like sprayed white and then three colours is not yeah, immersive. Yeah, it's, it, it's it? not. It's not. You can you know I mean at the end of the day, like you can tell he was there just to play. Yes, you know, and it's not, it's not a bad thing, but at the same time, it takes other players out of the immersion kind of thing. It so. does, and I suppose a tournament, you know, how you, that's another another question, isn't it? How immersive is a tournament meant to be? But mm. I think I think if you're going to go to a tournament, you should you should um, try and make it immersive for your opponent. Because if you think about it as well, though, you could you there could be an argument out there. I'm just putting it out there. There could be an argument out there to say, well, a tournament isn't for painted models because a tournament you're there to play you're there to win yeah in theory you know i mean you're you're there to have fun of course as well that's what the 10 points is there for is is an incentive i guess like if your army's painted you get 10 points yeah but again that feels a bit cheesy like what if i if you if you played me and the score was 85 to 75 Mm. and i've i've done that three color Mm. um so i get my 10 points for the for for being painted Mm -hmm. whereas you've spent 100 hours on your necrons exactly it it doesn't feel right does it it doesn't now do you think here's another thing that we could talk about more in detail in the future do you think the 10 points should be there in the points i think um i do think it's an incentive but again i think i don't think three colors should get you 10 points Mm -hmm. do you reckon it should just be a rule to be like your army should be painted I and think, then, like yeah. the, the ten points are irrelevant. I mean, I think you get them. I think it's fairly. Anyways. I think it's fairly straightforward. Is you, the ruling the the wording could be something like your army has to be painted to a reasonable standard, and that is at the discretion of the judges. Mm. So the judges come round at the beginning and say, "Right, your army looks great, Jack. You can have ten points. Mm. Dan, you can have eight points for your um, for your painted army because it's not quite there yet." And you with the three colors. You reckon there, there should be a scale. You're well, reckon? you could do it that way, or mm. you could just, you know, or it's you, interesting. But that way, it would it would then encourage people to paint to a reasonable standard. Yeah. See, I was thinking more of like the free rule, free color rule should be there, mm-hmm. and it's not dictated by points. So everyone earns those points throughout the game, and instead, you basically just get the points as you play. But the free rule system's there just to make sure people are painting them. And I guess that would take away to be like, oh, right, you've won by six points. But your army is the free colour, so it's like, oh well, actually, the free point, the free colour system doesn't really matter in terms of points, so it's fine because I am there to play and not paint. Yes, if that makes sense. Yes, I think there's an argument on both ends because I think yeah. there's because I, even I'm saying it, I don't fully believe it. You well, know, it, well, I, 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 I like having I, armies painted. I know what you mean, but there's two sides to the coin, isn't there? So you don't want to exclude people that don't have the confidence to paint or the mm-hmm. time or whatever. Yeah. You know, there, there's lots of reasons why people can't or don't paint. Yeah. So you don't want to exclude them from being able to go to events and compete at a reasonable level, I suppose. Yeah. But if you're in the hobby to 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 that level where you're going to competitive events, you mm. should have a you should be able to paint. Yeah. Mm. Like you probably would have read the books a few times. You would have known about the law yeah, and such like that. You would, think, have, yeah. you would have been a little bit more invested yes, in the hobby exactly, to, exactly. to then have wanted to. Yes. Yeah. I think it's good. I think it's good. We'll have more of a conversation another time, I reckon, because I think yeah, that's a, I think it's a, thought, it's a big, uh, definitely, big topic. Definitely um, let us know what you think about the 10 point rule and the three color rule as mm. well, because we're really interested to know that. See what everyone else's thoughts yes. are. Um, maybe the last one to then, to then dive on, which kind of maybe follows suit on this is, do models need to be painted well? Yes, I mean that's based. Yeah, to that to that level, definitely yes. Um, I, uh, they need to be painted to a standard, mm. um, and that means trying your best, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah, that's, and that's all I can ask of anybody. Um, so, if you are uh, taking a new army to um, to an event, um, then it should be painted to. You should have enough time to paint it to a, a tabletop standard. At least. Well, I think it just goes back to like you know people who maybe un- not, might not be as confident of getting. Their, their vision out there onto their onto their models. Yes, giving it a try. Yeah, yeah. To your best standard. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, once you, one, the more you do it, the more you get better at it, and the more techniques you learn. Um, and at the same time, look, I, I go to tournaments to learn how to play better. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I mentioned very briefly mentioned it before. I've seen other night players, and I knew I was going to be painting my knights. So I was asking them, "Oh, how did you do this? Yes. How did you do that?" So although though we were there to play. I was still asking them, how did you paint it this way? Yeah, that's how a brilliant, did you do that brilliant point. And do the same at your local gaming clubs yeah. and at stores as well, is, is talk to people about how they've done these techniques. Yeah, yeah very yeah. much so. For me, I, I feel like your models don't need to be painted well at all, but still need to follow that kind of standard. Of to, a, to a minimum standard. Minimum yes. standard, yeah. free colours and based and, you know, just give a bit of, because at the end of the day, they come as a blank slate. So you can make them however you want. So yeah. I, I love seeing different styles of painting being done. Like there was that, um, I don't know if you remember that tournament that I went to, the uh, the Iron Brew 
Um, oh, the Scottish lad with the yeah, iron, brew, iron brew Eldar, amazing yeah. Amazing yeah. little take on how to paint stuff. And that's another creative way of doing stuff where you don't just have to, you know, look, I mean, a lot of people do for inspiration, but, you know, you look at the box art and you're like, I'm going to paint the box art. Yes. Where, or you might be like, oh, I'm going to read for the codex and look at all the different color schemes. Yeah. Instead, be like, oh, I'm going to scrap all that and get my favorite drink I'm of iron going brew. off the reservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just bring my <laughs> iron brew on. Yeah. So I, I think there's, you know, it's, there's, there's creativity there that that needs to shine. And I think it's good that people need to bring their own creativeness to their own models because that's just more fun yeah there's definitely i think um you can start i my necrons are very much box art and um that's fine you know there's nothing wrong no, with that. that's not all but if i was doing them over again i wouldn't do box art you reckon I mean, yeah i think i'll yeah. try something a bit more daring Ducari, i haven't gone um not uh, i haven't gone box art i've gone a, a bit i haven't quite nailed the color scheme for them yet but mm. i've gone much more sort of um grimy it's and nice. darker than, yeah. than normal some Drakari a lot of Drakari are quite bright and mm. um, to, uh, almost like synth wave you see some artists mm. look really good yeah, but it's not what yeah. I wanted I wanted them to because they're quite evil <laughs> so <laughs> you, you don't want them yeah. like shining yeah. you're like oh look at this we're happy yeah. <laughs> it's slit you yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, that's good yeah, yeah very good so uh, there's um, there's a lot to uh lot to cover so we'll cover them um, more in, a, in another one to run out yeah, of time today definitely um, loads to talk uh, about yeah thank you very much for joining us uh, today and um let us know your thoughts yep. about painting what you like what you dislike um what you think about the three color rule or the 10 point rule and um, um please do like keep liking sharing and subscribing yeah giveaway is ongoing as well so don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel yes. go check out the post on our instagram there'll be a link in the description below and apart from that Thanks so much. Thank you.